Well, hello there, fourth graders. Missed you. Glad that I can at least come on YouTube and talk to you a little bit. Today, we're going to do some book talks so that you can pick up some of these books for this summer and do some of your summer reading. Hopefully, you can find these books at the Seaford Public Library online, um, or when the public libraries open up, you can go there and you can check them out. If your adults have a way to order online, you can do that as well. Or your adult may be in some type of uh, book club online where you can actually read these books um, through that. So see what you can do. Ask your adults and find out. The first book that we're going to talk about is New Kid. A few kids at Fred Douglas have asked me if I have gotten this book yet. Well, I'm about to. So hopefully when we start school in August, it'll be available. And New Kid is one of the most popular new graphic novels. And this is by Jerry Craft. And New Kid is about um, a young man named Jordan Banks. And all he loves to do is draw. And he wants to do that for a living. He draws cartoons. He wants to make books, all that different stuff. He wants to go to a prestigious art school so that he can continue this as a career, but instead his parents enroll him in a private school that's known for its academics of reading, writing, and math. Jordan's really disappointed, but he has to go with what his parents want. And then when he gets to this school, he realizes that he has to travel pretty far from Washington Heights uh, to this Riverdale Academy Day School and he's one of the only kids of color in the whole school. So he feels like he's torn between two worlds and he doesn't feel like he belongs in either one. Will he be able to get through his days at school and then also keep his friends in his neighborhood? He wants to stay true to himself most of all. So if you haven't heard of New Kid, try to check it out and see if you like it. And Jerry Craft is also coming out with another graphic no novel that continues New Kid, and this is called Class Act. And Class Act just continues um, the main character's story, and another character of color is introduced in this story. His name is Drew Ellis, and he also goes to Riverdale Academy Day School, and he has to work 10 times as hard as the other kids there, and he still doesn't seem to get the same results. So he's starting to feel like it's because of his color. Um, and to make things worse for this character, his good friend Liam seems like he's one of the privileged kids who gets away with not doing as much work. And Drew feels that almost all the kids are privileged and don't have to do as much as he does and any other kids that are of color that go to this school. So he tries to pretend everything's fine, but it's hard not to turn away from these friends and from, from um, the school. And he doesn't really know what to do. Um, and a friend called Jordan doesn't really know how to keep all of them together as friends. When pressure gets too high, Drew has to find a way that he can keep these friends and have them all accept each other, no matter what color their skin is or what they believe or what they do. And he also needs to accept himself for who he is. So this is another great book. Um, it's won awards as well as New Kid. And um, go ahead and when that comes out, I'm going to order it. We'll have it at Fred Douglas media center next year, but maybe you could try to see if it's out and you can get it soon. So remember Jerry Craft is the author and illustrator's name. New Kid is the story of Jordan Banks, a future cartoonist, but his mom refuses to send him to the art school of his dreams. And now that everything is new, it will be even harder for him to fit in. New School, the prestigious Riverdale Academy Day, AKA RAD, a nice school. A really, really, really nice school. 
new friends. Like Liam, underneath his pink shirt is a heart of gold. He's been at Rad since kindergarten. And fellow new kid, Drew, math whiz, who's also looking to fit in. Can Jordan survive being one of the few kids of color while keeping his neighborhood friends and staying true to himself? See for yourself in New Kid. An excellent chapter book that's coming out is called A Good Kind of Trouble. It's about a girl named Shayla. She's actually going into seventh grade, and she wants to stay out of trouble most of all. She wants to follow the rules, and um, she wants to keep her friendships together in junior high school, which is the same as middle school. And um, she realizes when she gets to junior high school that it seems like all the rules have changed. She is questioning who her friends really are. And she is also having people say that she doesn't act like she's black enough. So that must be tough to deal with. And Shay's sister, Hannah, is involved in the Black Lives Matter movement, and it's a club at the school. Shay doesn't think that this is for her. She doesn't really want to get involved. But she goes to a protest with her sister, and that kind of hooks Shayla to this cause. Uh, she starts to wear an armband to school, and she thinks it could get her in trouble, but she wants to do the right thing, but she's terrified also of doing the wrong thing. So you'll have to see if you sound like this book is uh, something you want to read and see what would happen at the end, because what would the right thing to do be if you believe in a cause? And what if you could get in trouble for wearing things that talk about this cause? All right. So that's another great book that's coming up, A Good Kind of Trouble. Another graphic novel that is of interest to fourth grade would be the novel Camp. And Camp is part of the Click book series, if you've heard of that. I'm going to try to get these for our library as well. And Camp follows a character named Olive and her friend Willow. And of course, it's summertime, so they're going to camp. Will they be happy there, or will they be unhappy campers? So Olive is sure that she's going to have a wonderful time. And Willow um, thinks so too, but Willow is struggling a little bit at camp to form friendships. So she kind of um, grasps onto Olive and won't let Olive make new friends. So will Olive be able to handle this? And then, um, after a while, the girls do possibly start to fight, um, but will they be friends by the time that camp is even over? Will they be able to patch things up, or will that be the end of their whole friendship? So you meet a lot of new characters in this book, and there's boys, girls, and of course, being about girls, um, there's camp counselors that they end up with crushes on and stuff like that. So seems like a very funny novel. It's by Kayla Miller, who is a best-selling author. So I know most of you love graphic novels. And um, I will also um, show you some of the other Click novels in just a minute. So Click is the first graphic novel. And of course, that follows the same characters. Second one's Camp, which we just talked about. The third one is called Act. So if you end up reading any one of these and like them, then try to get the other ones and continue with the series.
since most of you all like scary books. I have another book from Mary Downing Hahn, who's one of my favorite kids horror writers, and she has a new book called Guest. Now, I'm not going to tell you too much about this book. Um, her stories are pretty scary. If you've read All the Lovely Bad Ones, which I've recommended, or Crutchfield Hall, which I've also recommended, she writes some really scary ghost stories. I believe she also wrote a couple other ones, and I will look up those um, names in just a minute. But I wanted to show you the book preview of Guest. So go ahead and get ready, and I'm going to start it now. Oh, Guess looks really, really spooky. And you'll have to read it to see if the main character can save her little brother. Um, some of the other books that Mary Downing Hahn has written it, are The Girl in the Locked Room. She also wrote Took. She wrote um, Deep and Dark and Dangerous, which is another book I'm going to be getting for our library and The Doll in the Garden. And those are some of the books that Scholastic Book Fairs has had for us in the past. So let me know if you want to read more of her books, if you find guests, and read that one. But remember, sometimes her books are a little scary even for Miss Bell. When I read all the lovely bad ones, I almost stopped reading because I, I thought it was pretty spooky. But Miss Bell's kind of a chicken. You guys are tougher and more brave. One of the books that I'm most excited to talk about today is called Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky. It is a graphic novel and it is being presented by Rick Rorden and he wrote um, Percy Jackson and the Olympians um, and he is presenting this um, fantasy by a newer author named Kwambe Mabalia. Now the art in this is awesome. And that's also by Kwambe Mabalia. And this, of course, is a fantasy epic. It's about a seventh grader named Tristan Strong, but he doesn't feel strong. He failed to save his best friend when they were in a bus accident together. And all he has left of his best friend, Eddie, is a journal that his friend wrote stories in. So Tristan is grieving for his best friend, and he's been dreading the month he's going to spend on his grandparents' farm in Alabama, where he's supposed to heal from the death of his friend. On his first day at his grandparents' farm, though, a creature shows up in his bedroom and he steals Eddie's journal. Tristan has no idea what this creature was. It looked sticky and it looked like something from out of this world. So he chases after this creature and he tries to grab the journal from it. So a tug of war takes place underneath a bottle tree, kind of like the one from um, Because of Wind Dixie. So there's bottles hanging in it. Seems like it's a magical place because once they start having a tug of war with the journal, Tristan punch it, punches the tree and he rips open a portal or chasm into another dimension. There are burning seas, haunted bone ships, iron monsters, and they all haunt the people who live in this world. So Tristan finds himself in the middle of a battle, and um, he has to decide if he's going to help or not. A lot of the heroes in this world are Black American gods. There's John Henry, Br'er Rabbit, and then a Nancy who is um, an African god that you may have heard of before. He's a weaver, a spider, and he can also be a man. But Anansi can be a trickster, so can Tristan trust him? And can Tristan um, help them win this battle so that he can get back 
to the people and the places that he loves. This is going to be an excellent graphic novel and novel, and I'm going to order a couple of them for our library, but try to check it out over the summer on your own. So that's Tristan Strong punches a hole in the sky. So I get to actually sit down and talk to Kwame Mbalia. For the first time, we're going to get to talk about Tristan Strong punches a hole in the sky. I am super excited for this book, and I think there are a lot of people that are likewise super excited. One thing that stands out right away, even before you read the book, is the great title, Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky. Why that title? What does that signify? There is an event that happens where there's magic, there's a right jab that would make Muhammad Ali proud, there is a cataclysmic explosion of fiery proportions. And I'm not gonna describe it too much more than that. Just know that um, it takes a lot of strength to punch your way into the sky. Okay, what is Tristan Strong um, Punches a Hole in the Sky about? Tristan Strong is about a boy, an African-American boy who loses his best friend um, and while dealing with that grief and that loss, is transported to a world where African American folk tales exist mm -hmm. and are in conflict with West African gods. Well, the cover art is just yes. absolutely phenomenal. Yep, yeah, the cover to Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky is more than I could ever dream um, that it would be. Uh, we have Tristan Strong and John Henry kind of back to back fighting these iron monsters. And you have Adinkra, West African symbols from the Akan people in what is now uh, Ghana and some other parts of West Africa. I, I never thought I'd see that on a book and Eric Wilkerson just did a fantastic job. One, one of the things that we know about Tristan Strong right away is that he's a boxer and there's a family tradition mm -hmm. of boxing. Uh, how did you decide on that element? Is that something that, um, that you are familiar with as well? I love boxing. Um, I love the old school boxing. I love Joe Lewis. I love Muhammad Ali and their fights and and everything that entailed, but also because what they, they represented for the African-American community um, at a time when they were fighting for more than just a championship belt. Tristan is a boxer who is not sure if he wants to be a boxer. He has a family history, and you know how family traditions are. Sometimes the youngest generations want to go their own way. We're not quite sure where he's going to end up with that. We know that he uses some of the tricks that he's learned from his dad and his granddad in the story. I'll just say that I might have stood up a few times and practiced the moves just to make sure that they were feasible. <laughs> Did you grow up with the folk tales that you're exploring, the West African um, mythos? My parents would do a fantastic job of exposing us to African-American and West African folk tales. They would show us John Henry, and then they would also give us stories of um, how Anansi stole the stories from Anyame the Sky God. Anansi is um, obviously one of the focal points of Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky. Anansi is a trickster god and is always trying to find sneaky ways of acquiring what he wants. This is something that gets told and passed down from generation to generation. And so I wanted to bring that forward into the present and allow a new generation to kind of experience that wonder uh, for their, you know, for themselves. You've got all these wonderful, empathetic, uh, fantastic, heroic characters, mm -hmm. but you also have, if you'll excuse the pun, bone chilling monsters. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some really, really uh, powerful stuff in there. You did a really brilliant job uh, evoking the idea of the slave ships. When I think of the story, I think of it as the personification of the Middle Passage, mm. right? This triangular trade where slaves were taken primarily from along the West African coast and shipped to North America and South America and Latin America. And so the monsters are the personification of those horrors. Mm. It was an exercise in creating real, visceral, recognizable villains and obstacles for Tristan to face. I think the end result was something that 
scary but informative. And your, your own daughters, to what extent are they aware of what dad's up to with this book? Have you shared any of it with them? Obviously, my four-year-old, she just um, likes the cover and to step on the book because it elevates her higher to the counter to get at the cookie jar. <laughs> My 8 and my 11-year-old are my sounding board for my jokes. They are a tough audience, I swear, because there are some things that tickle me absolutely. And they're just like, you know what, Dad? Nah, it's not going to work. They'll let you know right oh, away. Quickly, <laughs> with no filter whatsoever. Well, Kwame, thank you so much for coming out and talking to us about Tristan Strong. I am so thrilled that this book is coming out with the Red Garden Presents imprint. We can't wait for kids to read it. I can't wait either. And thank you all. I'm glad that this story is allowed to be told and gets out there to a new generation of folks. I can't wait for them to read it. The final book I'm going to be telling you about today is called The School for Good and Evil. And this is a dark fantasy, and it's perfect for those who like fairy tales, but they kind of have a twist. So every four years in this book, Two girls are kidnapped from their village, and the legend is told that these lost children are sent to the school for good and evil, and it is a mythical or magical institution where these children learn to become fairy tale heroes or villains. So the first girl who's kidnapped, her name is Sophie. She has glass slippers, and she loves to do good deeds. And she knows that she's going to be around heroines like Cinderella, Rapunzel, Snow White at the School for Good. Then there's Agatha. She has a shapeless black dress and a wicked black cat. And she knows that she should be a great fit for the school of the villains, for the school of evil. But things happen a little bit differently than the girls realize. Once they get to the school, Sophie ends up in the school for evil, and Agatha ends up in the school for good. They have to figure out why were they put in opposite schools. And amazingly enough, they will come to find that they have gifts that really can benefit good or evil. And then that way they're going to find out who they really are. So this is another graphic novel with excellent illustrations and ex excellent storyline, and I would encourage you to check it out this summer as well. In the forest primeval, a school for good and evil. Two towers like twin heads, one for the good, one for the wicked. Try to escape, you will always fail. The only way out is through a fairy tale.
gonna try to attach the um, book trailers for all these books here if I can find them. And please watch them and you can comment and you can vote for the books that you think seem like they are the best. And like I said, whatever ones you vote for, I will try to order for our library. All right, well, Miss Bell, I miss all of you. I hope I get to see you soon in August. I hope you have a fabulous summer and that you're able to get out of the house just like I want to get out of the house and be able to do things and go back to our normal lives. So hope to see you in August. Stay healthy, stay happy, have fun, but also pick up some good books and read. All right. See you later, boys and girls. Bye.